Hi, my name is Gareth Pronovost and I'm an Airtable consultant. In this video, I'm going to be walking through the top three misuses that I see time and time again with my clients in their bases. So, you know, over time you start to see uh, patterns and trends developing and the, this video is really going to serve to point out those three ways that I see people building bases that just really isn't optimal. I'm not going to say it's wrong, but I'll call it a misuse. Just, you know, ways that you could get more out of Airtable. So, in this video, I'm going to go through those top three ways, do a little countdown for you, and of course, most importantly, provide you with the right way or the, the optimal way of, uh, of addressing these things so that you get the most value out of your databases as possible. So without further ado, let's jump on into it. Welcome to Entrepreneurship by the Numbers, where we help unlock the potential of your business with data-driven metrics. All right, so jumping on into a base here, my number three uh, misuse case that I see time and time again with Airtable is this. So when you start a base from scratch, you're gonna have these three fields. You've got name, you've got notes, and you've got attachments. And I think that this number three thing comes from the fact that you've got notes, and it has to do with the way that you can collaborate in the base. And so I see people time and time again uh, leaving notes for each other like uh, spoke to client, uh, on, on such and such a day, right? I'll see a note like that in a base and it's, a, it's an interesting thing because I don't know why you would put it in here um, on the record in this way. And so the actual, like I would call it the preferred way of doing that would actually be to, to expand the record. And so you can either hit the space bar or click on these arrows right here. And so inside the base, you see here on the right, this is where you can actually collaborate with your team and leave notes. So rather than changing this field to spoke to client on a date, I could just leave that comment here and now anybody who's paying attention to this record is gonna get a notification. And you see here, it's because of watching. So it says that I'm gonna be notified whenever somebody comments on the record and that's because I've commented on the record. Also, if I wanna deliver like someone's attention directly to this, I can do an at reference. Now this base is an example base, so it's only to me, uh, but if anyone else that you're sharing a base with, you can do an at reference, and the really cool thing is that's gonna push notification them in three ways, or they're gonna receive notification in three ways. So the first way is up here on the little alerts. So any notification that you have up here, you'll see a one, two, uh, for you know count, uh, increase here uh, depending on how many times records have been um, commented on that you're watching. Then there's another you know, two more ways that you can uh, have notifications as well and you can come here to your notification preferences and you see that you've got mobile push notifications and this is if you have the mobile version downloaded on your phone you'll just receive a push notification on your phone and the other way is email. By default both of these are going to be checked I believe uh, for me personally, I think that the email is just a little bit overwhelming. It's just like ping, 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 and my inbox fills up and I just, I don't need it. So I've unchecked this, but you know, experiment with these and figure out what works best for you. So when you're collaborating with your team, don't use, you know, specific field just for notes. Uh, when you have something to say to a particular team member or just the whole team needs to know, just put it on the right hand side of the record itself. Best part is you'll even see here that you've got a comment here. Now, now that I left that comment, there's a, there's a number floating here. So everybody knows uh, that you know, someone's made a comment on this record. So definitely check that out. Start commenting this way and you'll see your workflows improve in a big way. All right, now heading on into my number two uh, misuse case for Airtable. And it really has a lot to do with integrations in order to automate your uh, procedures within your business. So. Most of the time you're gonna be using Zapier uh, for this. So Airtable has a really great integration with Zapier where you can uh, program automations from your Airtable base so that things happen automatically under certain conditions. And the way you do this most of the time is by setting Zapier to look at one particular view in your base. And when you do this, when you create a unique view, the problem is if somebody goes in behind and alters this view, then it's gonna break the whole automation. Like, I mean, just putting in an extra field or uh, you know, changing a filter or something could break that entire automation and then you're just like, you won't even know for potentially days and you'll think that everything's working like normal in your business and then all of a sudden you realize, oh, 
you know, we haven't been uh, doing these tasks that we thought were being taken care of automatically. So let's jump on into uh, this example here. So let's say I have this situation, and this actually came from a client just the other day. So you've got uh, some tasks, and let's suppose that what you wanna have happen is if you have uh, a task that's overdue and it's not complete yet, you want the uh, Airtable to send you an automatic uh, email. Well, excuse me, not Airtable, it would be Zapier, sending you an email to say, hey, you've got an overdue task and it's not done. So here's, here's what we are really looking at, right? We've got an overdue formula here, and here's the formula if you wanna take a look. It's just saying if the due date is bigger than today, then we're gonna say, no, it's not overdue. And if the due date is bigger than today, we're gonna say yes. So this is a simple if statement. And, uh, and so today, as of the filming, this is, it's uh, August 19th. So August 20th is gonna say no, and everything before the 19th will say yes, it's overdue. Now it can be overdue if it's done, no problem. But if this is unchecked, task three here is obviously overdue. So what we want is to set up a Zapier to send an, an email to ourselves to say, hey, task three is overdue. How do we do that? Well, we need to build our uh, Zapier view. And our Zapier view is gonna be filtering these two things. It's gonna filter where the overdue formula is yes and where complete is not checked. These are the two conditions that have to be met in order for something to come into this field. And so what we're doing is just setting up a particular view and we don't want this view to ever be messed with because if it is, like I said, it's gonna break our integration. So the way that we do this, and this is, this is a super, super easy way to fix this, and it's a relatively new feature in Airtable, is locking that view down. We need to go in and select locked view, and we can say why. We can say this is a Zapier integration. And if we say that, you know, then our team would know, oh, okay, well, that's why it's locked. And now that it's locked, we cannot uh, click these formulas. I'm trying to click. If I were to try to click and, you know, make changes here, it's not going to let me. And so uh, you can see here it's saying this view is locked. And the whole purpose of this is to make sure that this view doesn't break. And this is the way that we can keep all of the parts of our business uh, that are integrated with Zapier and various automation softwares. We can keep them all uh, exactly how we need them. Because if we don't do this, things, go, things can go haywire and we won't even know. All right, now finally down to my number one biggest misuse of Airtable that I see over and over again. And that really comes down to how people are planning out their bases and what they think needs to happen in the flow of work. So very common thing that I see in the forums and with my clients before I start working with them is they think that, let's say there's uh, two steps, two, two major uh, stages within the workflow. So maybe something has six different steps. It has step A, B, C, and that's part of workflow one. And then once step well, once workflow one is done, then it goes into workflow two, and then it has steps D, E, F. So we've got A, B, C with the first workflow, D, E, F with the second workflow. And what I see over and over again is people thinking that they wanna build two separate tables for this, where they have a table that goes A, B, C, and then as soon as it hits you know, done with workflow one, they want it to show up in a second table, uh, and then they'll get, they're gonna finish out you know, work, uh, steps D, E, F. And Again, this isn't wrong. You could build a Zap in Zapier to do this and get that information over there. Um, and it's, it's not technically wrong, but it's kind of a misuse. And here's the reason. And so let's jump on in. If you have this, you could have you know, steps A, B, C in one phase, and then you could have steps uh, D, E, F in a second phase. Now here's the, here's the way to do this is build Kanban views for yourself. So this is gonna be workflow number one and you're going to look at phase one. And now for this, you have your orders and you can place them throughout here, and it's only when they get to step C that you want them to show up on the next workflow, right? So here's what we're gonna do for this. We're gonna build a second workflow in another Kanban view, workflow number two, and we're gonna look at phase two for our stacking. And now we're gonna set a filter we're gonna add a filter where workflow or where phase one is only step C. And the reason for this is it needs to move through workflow one before we are gonna put it into workflow two, right? And so it's only if it's reached step C that we're gonna allow it to go into DEF. And so we're putting a filter on here and now we're only seeing those workflows that we put into uh, step C. 
And so now we can move those pieces and move them throughout the workflow for our second workflow. No need to build two tables here. No need to build crazy zaps. As you see, it's pretty you know, simple and straightforward. You just need to organize it in the right way with two, uh, and going back to that grid view, if you wanted to duplicate this, all I've done here is used two uh, single select um, variable fields and then set those single select fields up in the appropriate way. All right, well, I hope you found that to be really useful. As always, if you have any questions or uh, comments, please do leave them below the video and I will definitely address those as quickly as I can. And uh, if you have any custom work that you'd like or some consulting assistance that I could provide, there is a link to my calendar below in the description, so definitely check that out. And in the meantime, best of luck as you continue to grow your empire. <laughs>